It's me, your daddy, Roberto. Daddy? You know, I seen you on the ESPN when they was talking about you being drafted by the NFL. Not going to the NFL. I'm going to stay in school and, and graduate. The hell with school, dopey. Take the money. You and me could be partners. Just like that Tiger Woods and his daddy. Hey, Sooner Football fans, this is your Sooner Football Fan Podcast. You got Terry and Rob here. Boomer up. Boomer Terry. And we are coming at you from the beautiful Podcast Palace. Right here in Norman, Oklahoma, where we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have eligibility left. And we want to give a big shout out to uh, Bob Doty, uh, Bill Doty, sorry, I called him Bob, Bill Doty. Yep. Tara's dad. Uh, hope you're having a good day. As always, uh, keep your chin up, and we're behind you and praying for you every day. And Boomer Sooner. And Boomer Sooner. Uh, make sure and hit your follow, like. Subscribe. Subscribe. You know, uh, helps us out. I don't know how, but that's what they keep telling me well, is to tell people. I keep waiting to see how that's helping us out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, make sure and go check out uh, Tailgate Connect, our good friend, um, Dan, Dan Donnelly. Dan Donnelly uh, runs that uh, to find all the great tailgates across the country. Um, if you're going to be somewhere where you want to go to a tailgate and hang out with other fans, we'll be on that. Our tailgate will be on that list. Don't you think that would be pretty cool just to, I mean, anywhere except for like LSU. Yeah, or uh, Oklahoma State. Or Oklahoma State. That or, would be pretty cool, Texas. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or Texas. <laughs> But or Texas Tech or t- yeah or a <laughs> or, or a and uh, but Nebraska I'd, yeah. be, I'd be okay with Nebraska I'd, I'd be okay with going to a tailgate Nebraska Army Navy game and UCLA I'd be okay yeah with that. and we are I hope so anyway uh, you know we do have the UCLA game going around um, getting ready uh, coming up for the UCLA game that Dan is hosting Tailgate Connect is hosting so you can go to www.tailgateconnect.com for all the information and sign up for the tailgate at the UCLA game. Listen, we need to make a plan for what we're going to do when we get to Hollywood. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure we're going to we're going to have some fun. <laughs> Hopefully not the kind that gets us thrown in jail, but but if we do get put in jail, we got Scotty. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Scotty come bail us out. Of course, listen, we don't if we go to jail where Scotty's working then we're in yeah we're we're in, in big trouble yeah big trouble yeah so uh but also um we put the announcement out yesterday um the friday night spring game pregame event this year is going to be at louis grill and bar on campus corner where we are every thursday night you can come down and hang out with us on a thursday night if you want Hey, parking down there is a little, <laughs> a little tough y'all so <laughs> get there early <laughs> uh, it is from six to ten um we do have the event posted on our facebook page um you can go and like the event let us know that you're coming uh, we're getting a lot of people with interest and in saying they're coming and it just kind of helps louis also they're tagged in it to kind of know what type of crowd yeah. not type of crowd it's going to be a great crowd i myself said i was interested today. yeah rob said he was interested i kind of <laughs> explained to him he's required <laughs> But we'll see. <laughs> and Caleb did the same thing. Caleb he said he Caleb. He said he's interested. So, but it is there. If you you know, um, it's just you know, good food, some drinks, and you know, I know there's people coming from out of town. There's a lot of people on Twitterverse, the Sooner Twitterverse, that want to meet all these people they talk to on Twitter, and this is just a place for everybody to gather and do that. Yep. So. Uh, I know uh, we got several. I don't want to read off who's going, but you can go check and go, you know, see who's going uh, if you want. But it's going to be a, a fun event, you know, a couple hours sitting out there just visiting. We'll probably do just some podcasts. Just putting podcast. faces to names yeah. probably is. Yeah, we'll probably do some podcasts, let some people talk. We'll oh, have cool. a little PA yeah. up so, every, you know, we can sit there. and We're going to video record or just audio? I don't know if I can get the video record uh, to do live stuff. Maybe do a little bit of both. Yeah. But so. There's people in there. Um, let's get to this first, Rob. Um, have you ever been told you're too old to get in somewhere? Let me think about that. Um, 
Well, they wouldn't let me in the playground one time. But <laughs> That's a whole I mean, nother. that was last week. <laughs> no, no, I've never been told that. Well, uh, Saturday night, you know, was our, mine and uh, the lovely Teresa's 30th wedding the anniversary. big three O. And we went to Blackbirds on Campus Corner. And they told you you couldn't get in? No, we had a oh. nice dinner there. Okay. Uh, we went up to the Bird's Nest, which I didn't know there was a Bird's Nest at Blackbirds. Ah. Uh, which is a cigar bar. Uh-huh. Big, nice bar up there. Uh, and they serve nothing but alcohol and cigars. <laughs> so, <laughs> and did they tell you you couldn't get in there because nope. you're too old? Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm starting yeah. to <laughs> feel like there's not a... Caleb and some oh, of okay. his okay. friends that were there... They went to Kong's down on Campus Corner Entertainment Center. That's a what? It's called Kong's Entertainment Center. Okay. It's down on Campus Corner. It's a new place. What kind of entertainment? Well, my understanding, <laughs> it's, and the stuff I saw in it when it opened was kind of like a Dave and Buster's. Ah. Okay. Smaller version of Dave and Buster's. So, Caleb and his friends are there. So, me and Teresa and a couple of friends of ours um, going to go over there and meet them. We didn't want to go there. We just, you know, let's see what it's about. Go in there, maybe have a drink, and, and move on. We get to the door, and there's this you know, six foot eight gorilla standing at the door. And well, that's awfully mean. He goes, uh, "You guys can't come in." We're like, "What do you mean we can't come in?" <laughs> I was initially thinking it's there's too many people in there. It's the you know fire code. You know they don't want too many people uh-huh, in there, uh-huh. which was would have been fine. You know they said you were too creepy though, huh? Pretty much, they said <laughs> the, on, the, the the exact words. <laughs> you're not the demographic that the ownership wants in here. Oh my god! <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> what? What exactly does that mean? And then it was, you're not in the age group that the ownership wants in here. Now Teresa thought he was joking, and so we kind of did too. She was like, oh yeah, right. And she opened the door. He reaches over with the back of his hand slams the door shut and says i'm not kidding you guys aren't coming in oh my god <laughs> really so back in the day when i was underage going down to campus corner i could get into anywhere okay <laughs> now i can't get into some places down or one place on campus corner because i'm too old huh yeah so well, you're not getting any younger so no. you might want to give up on that spot yeah so you know, we ventured over to to Louis on Campus Corner and stayed there a couple of hours, and you know they missed out. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm too old to go to Kong. Speaking, well, you know, that's not a very good business model because no. the the people that are older have more money than that's the people what, that are younger. That's what people were saying was like, do they not realize you probably had twice as much money to spend in there, <laughs> right, <laughs> in an hour as everybody else did? Uh huh. Speaking of old. <clears throat> Saw the big news today. Oklahoma is playing the University of Clemson Tigers. They have scheduled a home and home. Are the kids that are going to be playing during that game even born yet? <laughs> Some of them are. They're two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In 2035 and 36, Oklahoma has got a home and home. Lincoln Riley will be 52. Hmm. Dabo Sweeney will be 65. I will be 68. And Rob will be 64. 34. <laughs> i doubt anybody believes that but yeah. i'm still throwing it out there yeah um <laughs> why are they even scheduling games that far out i mean i don't know that is odd that's you know that's so and it was kind of a big now i mean oklahoma didn't like push it out there it was a bunch of the you know scheduling groups. i mean that's 16 17 years in the future You're right i mean i i don't how how far out do they schedule now i don't even I know. Don't know so but the the kids there there are people that are two years old and then the other two classes aren't born yet <laughs> when we will play a home and home with clemson right it just seems like okay go ahead and schedule it, but don't announce it you know <laughs> you know what i would probably go out on a bold limb here and say that neither one of the coaches that are here now will be here then you don't think so no i don't think so he's only gonna be 52 yeah I, you know i mean it's possible bob was here 18 years, 17 years, 18 years, 19, 19 years, something like that. No, not 19. Cause he came in what? 2000. No, he came in 99, 99, 98. He was hired in 98, 98 or 99. And first season was 99, 17. It's right? whatever. We don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. So. <laughs> but he's your 32 years. Anyways, yeah. Forever. So, but there's the big news. 
of the day. So, you know, I think we're, we'll probably require ADA seating for that game, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe. So, moving on, the other thing I wanted to talk to is the cupcake world we are living in. Yeah. Nowadays. I know it's probably old news to everybody, but this is our first podcast since it came out. Michigan State, and I know we're talking about basketball. Um, Coach Tom Izzo. Uh, you can wake me up when it's over. <laughs> was slambasted on Twitter the other night during their game when that he. That a word? Slambasted? <laughs> he was. I don't know. I, okay. Hammered. Let's go with it. Let's go slam, with it. Slambasted. <laughs> whatever it was. Um. For chewing out his freshman superstar, Aaron Henry, on national TV. And I mean it was spit coming out of his really? face, chewing out. And people were like, I'll be glad when that's gone. Old school basketball, da-da-da-da, all this stuff. Now, why is it that we're in a world now that a kid who is, yeah, he's 18 years old, 17, 18, 19 years old, an elite athlete, because he's playing for Michigan State basketball, so mm-hmm. he's an elite athlete. For sure he is. Makes a mistake, and not just a mistake. We'll go into what why he got chewed out. Okay. But people were like, he doesn't deserve that. Huh. Okay. See, I don't watch the ESECPN, so I don't I don't know. Well, anything ESPN about it. did. Actually, Scott Van Pelt came out and told people to shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. He did uh-huh. like a long, and uh, Lincoln Riley retweeted it, said, well said. It's like. This doesn't concern you people. This is, you know, this is a. So shut your pie hole. Yeah, it was basically <laughs> shut up, butt out. This, right. this, is a, this is a family, a sport, a organization that is there to win, and the coach got onto a player for making mistakes. Now, um, what uh, Tom Izzo said is that he did get after him. He did respond. Aaron Henry made a couple of big buckets. He did make some big free throws, but that's not good enough. It's one and done time now. The my bads are out the window. Mm-hmm. Tom Izzo goes on to say, what's wrong with challenging a kid that makes some mistakes? Izzo said, according to ESPN link, uh, that uh, Aaron Henry, trust me, did some things that you can't do as a starter on a top five team at the end of your freshman year. They were effort related. That's what Tom Izzo said. Man. That's why he chewed him out. Huh. Um, and also Henry, Aaron Henry comes back because they asked him about it. And he said, um, just responding to it and accepting the coach and not having uh, a pity party for yourself and just being a basketball player and go respond. He told the Detroit Free Press. It's been a minute since uh, he chewed me out because I haven't played this bad in a while. It's once in in every blue moon, I feel like. So I have to be better this Saturday. Then he got his point across to him, obviously, didn't he? (laughs) And the kid didn't have a problem with it, but everybody was, there's no place for that in sports. You know, he's bewildered. No, he's getting on to an elite athlete for loafing. Yeah. That's what he said. He was not giving it wasn't it wasn't he missed a shot. He was not giving the right. effort expected. Yeah. So he deserved what he got. Right. And I'd like to point out that back when we played <laughs> the we got, you know, yeah. in in your face. I mean they had spit on you, whatever, right. knock you down. And that helped us turn into the fine individuals that we are today. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm and, and I don't think any of us are you, Rob, me or anybody else and Scott Van Pelt you know, is, is condoning the laying on of hands of, you know, of slapping a player or something like that. But, well, I certainly didn't like it when it happened to me. So I, <laughs> I got slapped upside the helmet a couple oh, of times. A bunch. And I don't have a problem with a, a, a coach grabbing the player by, by the shoulder pads or by the, the cup of the shirt and, yeah. and getting in their face. You know, he's not rearing back to punching. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's, and it's like, this is the, the cupcake world, you know, that everybody gets a trophy world that we're living in now that people are responded on Twitter that po- just p- started posting watching the game is that this coaching style needs to go away. No, no, no. You know, well, that's the world we live in. Sam yeah, blasted right. him. Sam blasted. Listen, the coach was standing at the 
at the entrance of the bus as I was getting off. I mean, he was getting in his position so that he could start yelling in my ear the whole time I was running those laps. Make sense. Just yelling at me the whole way around the yeah. field. So he could run faster sideways while yelling in my ear than I could, you know. I'm just saying. But see, I mean, here's the thing is that coaches, especially Division One coaches and even high school coaches, okay, they're around these players 24-7 pretty much. Mm-hmm. They know what their ability is. They know when they're loafing. They know when they're not they putting forth the effort. And when you're in, like as I said, a one and done situation, and you're not putting forth the max effort that you should be putting forth, you're going to get your butt chewed. And there's why does anybody why we why even tweet about it? Well, he could have um, he could have sat him down and said, "Hey, uh, listen, I just want you to know that you're loafing." And um, your mama sees you on TV. <laughs> I mean, you think that would have worked <laughs> more than <laughs> listen, scumbag? Yeah, you know, and and a couple of the other players that you know, they, there was a big deal that the a couple of the other players got between them and stuff. But that happens in sports all the time. You see it in football. You see, it, you know that that you know when a coach and a player are going after it, that some of the players are just getting in between them, and it's like, oh, because at that you know there is at a point that it's you know now it's non-productive, right. but. Apparently, Izzo was reading him the riot act of, hey, you know, you're, there, it, I expect more out of you. You better do more. Yeah. And this world that we're in, it frustrates me. You know, I think kids should get yelled at and have to run bleachers and only get, you know, a, 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 a thimble full of water. Mm hmm. You know, because I had to. That's what I went through. <laughs> I think every kid deserves whoopings because I got them. <laughs> you know what I hated most when back back when we were playing? What's that? You know, you've been working hard. You're out there and you're sweating and you're just thirsty as you can be. Mm-hmm. And you get up to the to the faucet at your turn and they go, one, two, that's enough. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm getting a drink. And then they'd be like, make that, you know. So... No, I hated I, that. You know, I've said it before that my high school coach was probably, I don't want to say a little bit before his time, but he believed in water. There was always water uh, on the field. If you wanted to drink water, if we were even in the huddle, you know, if we were, you know, we were running first team offense, first team defense during, you know, during the play, if you raised your hand, there was a guy standing there with, with water. Mm. And Coach Wadsworth was always, you know, keep water in you, you know, but – Younger days, you know, freshman year, yeah, that wasn't the case. Eighth grade <laughs> year, that wasn't the case. But, you know, um, it, it's just the people need to, you know, when you see a guy getting chewed out on the sidelines, it's sports. You know, it, it's a, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, I would say soccer, but not soccer. You know what? Sometimes uh, those kids need somebody yeah. to yell at them yeah. to get some performance out of the, them. These, aren't, these are kids that are the best of the best at what they do. Yeah. You know, it's not It's not like they drug me, you know, Tom Izzo got me and you on the court and said, he's going go to go, he's gonna need to yell. <laughs> he's going to need to yell at me. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> because it's what's expected of these athletes. They're yeah. getting – yeah, the athlete is make, making the university millions of dollars, and we talked about that before. But they're also getting an education to perform. Right. Well, and, you know, you don't want the L.A. Lakers sitting in the stands going, that kid's a loafer. Right. You, you, you know. You know, he's helping him. Izzo's helping yeah. him. Yeah. You know, and, so. it's, and it's no different than, than you know, parents getting on to their kids about great. This, this guy is the coach, the father figure of these kids right now. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't put his hands on him. Right. He didn't call him a name. Well, he probably did. But, <laughs> but you know, um, it's sports. And when we and when we take the discipline out of sports, we're losing that sport. You know what I mean? Probably. Whatever. Yeah. It, it, if a if if Lincoln Riley can't, you know, get in Jalen Hurts' face. Um, and say, listen, when you go around the corner, you got to be at full speed. Right. You can't be loafing right. around. Don't, yeah, don't, uh-uh, uh-uh. When, and I'm sure there was time, you know, you ask uh, Lincoln the question that the coaches showed, you know, do you get excited or worried when Kyler takes off? Right. <laughs> With the yeah. ball. And he said, a little bit of both, but he knows what he's doing. But he was coached also to get down. You're not, you mm-hmm. don't take the hits. 
you know, and he was great at that. And Lincoln coached that in him. Do you not think if he would have tried if, if he would have tried to lower his shoulder a couple times in a game and run <laughs> over somebody that Lincoln Riley wouldn't have been in his face? Oh, I'm sure he would have. Yeah, uh, I would have. Yeah. Listen, you <laughs> you do you're, not. <laughs> you're not 6'2", 225. <laughs> you're going to slide. You're 5'11", or 5'10", or Yeah, and if he goes eight. out if he goes out and does it again, <laughs> you're going to chew him out more and then you're going to tell him I'm going to sit you on the bench the next time you try to run over a 6'3" linebacker yeah. okay so it's coaching people <sighs> okay that's my soapbox for today rob we are losing um, to the cowboys and i am not happy yeah we have we have the uh um bedlam baseball game on up in stank water what is it two to nothing two to nothing yeah yeah so um it's still early yeah but we do have a fan coming on. He's a repeat fan uh, that was on last year. Uh, that we're is that the kind that rotates? The fan that rotates? <laughs> oh, wrong kind of fan? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> he is a Sooner fan who was on the podcast last year, Claude Mills. And so we're going to get a hold of Claude and talk a little bit of Sooner football. All right, Sooner fans, on the phone with us all the way from Guthrie, Oklahoma. However, he's originally from Okima, Oklahoma. We got Sooner fan Claude Mills. Remember, Claude? Boomer, gentlemen, how are we? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Well, I am uh, ready to uh, turn the calendar ahead several months so we can get going. <laughs> well, now, can I, sh- can I share the first game of the year story? From last yes, year, absolutely. yeah, we hope we hope that this year's first game goes better than your last year's first game. Oh yeah, because, yeah, that that works good. Because <laughs> you know, Claude uh, comes over to the tailgate with a friend, and I think he had a little bit of food. So then we visited for a little while and went to the game. And I guess at some point during the game, you you or it was after the game, but you had to leave the game because you had a um, a heart episode. Isn't that what they called it? Yeah, a cardiac episode. It was before the game started. Ah, okay. And we ended up having to come up and bring your stuff up to the hospital and <laughs> everything else. So, yep. you know, that wasn't a good start to the season. But all, all that stuff got cleared up, and you are in. You got a good bill of health now? Yeah, I'm doing good. I got, uh, finally got out of my boot. I uh, finished up the uh, surgery. They put a... Uh, um, nerve stimulator in my back and attached it to my spine to take care of the nerves I had when I was wearing that boot where I got in that uh, accident. So other than that, I'm ready to go. Well, that's that's good to hear. Fantastic. So um, first, do you, I wanted to, uh, we, we also started doing this little thing as we talk about people's hometowns, if we can find stuff out about the hometowns. Now, you're, for, you're originally from Okima, correct? Mm-hmm. And yes, Okima Panthers is your high school mascot. Yes. And for those of you that didn't hear the podcast last year when Claude was on, he went to school with one of my high school football coaches, um, uh, Chris The Rock McMullen. Um, and I guess y'all knew each other pretty well, which will also tell you that Claude's quite a bit older than me and Rob. So that's one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm right. I'm, uh, Rock's just a few years older than I am. Not very many, but just a few. Now, do you follow Okima sports at all? You're living up in Yeah, Gilford? I've been uh, uh, following when I can. Um, we had a real good year this year. Uh, had a kid uh, uh, ended up signing a letter of intent to play football at uh, OBU. That's good. Uh, kid named Harjo. Um, so. I try to keep up with them as much as I can. I noticed they had a pretty good little run in the basketball tournament. Um, so, yeah, I try to keep up as much as I possibly can. Yeah, depending no. on how work goes. Yeah, it looks like they beat the dog poo out of Holdenville 70-30 to 30 this year in football. Um, yeah. Uh, beat Chandler pretty good, 52-36. to 36. Um, Holbert and Hugo, they beat... Holbert forty four to twelve and Hugo fifty six to twenty four, but I guess they got into the playoffs and got a hold uh, Oklahoma Christian School, which 
baptized them with fire. I guess <laughs> they got yeah, they, they got, got beat sixty three to twenty six by I, I guess in the playoffs. Yeah, that uh, that that little uh, um, private Christian school reminds me of uh, when my younger brother was in school, Cash Hall. Ah, yeah. <laughs> they used to be uh, good. Then, of course, when when uh, um, back in the day, you know, when I was you know young, the studs there were, you know, in that class was um, Vianne, Hobart, um, Morris was really good, and uh, um, but yeah, Cash Hall was one of those private schools like Oklahoma Creek that yeah. you know give us a little bit of fits, but. They uh, uh, got a good coach. Uh, they seem to be rolling. Uh, we had they had some a lot of down years, um, but they seem to be coming back. I'm I'm glad to be able to get a chance. I'm going to try to get down and, and watch one live uh, this year. Um, depending on, of course, work. You know that that always comes first. Right. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, got to you got to buy food. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I got a bad habit. I like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, what did you think about the the year? Any frustrations? Any anything you like? Anything you're worried about coming into the you know spring and and fall of 2019? Well, you know, I, I I think we had a you know a great year. It was kind of the the mirror image of the year with you know Baker. Uh, you know, we'd had just you know just a little defense. We'd had two you know, <laughs> national championships, but, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, um, uh, how the grants is going Grant, to be. Yeah. That, 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 that's got me excited. Me and, uh, my son Chase were sitting here and we were just watching a, uh, video of him and, you know, he had them all down there and I mean, you couldn't, you know, that none of them were talking or anything, and boy, he was just lowering the boom. So yeah. I, was, I was glad to see that. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to, um, you know, Jalen Hurts and uh, see how, you know, he's going to um, follow into this, you know, legacy that, he, that he's following. Right. Uh, and find out, you know, because that's, that's got to be a, just a – mammoth mountain of pressure, you know, for somebody to be following, you know, these two, two uh, Heisman Trophy winners. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're following two Heisman Trophy winners and probably the, the – the, the Two first round Two picks. first, you know, first yeah, pick first, first, first overall yeah. pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. no so pressure, Jalen. Uh, no pressure. I'm anxious to see these, uh, these, these stud receivers now. Um, uh, I'm ready to see the, you know, our backs, you know, the preacher and Kenny Brooks and, uh, you know, those guys. I'm just, I'm just anxious. I'm anxious to see the stoner Clay kid. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm just really excited to see what Grinch is going to do for our defense. I just, I got a funny feeling that we're going to kind of maybe relive the eighties, so to speak. <laughs> With the bars and you know, well, people I, so. I think they seem to. I think they just by you know the stuff you read and you know you can you know see the videos you know practice and stuff like that. It, it just seems to be uh, there's a sense of urgency there that you just didn't see. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm I'm just wound up. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I, I think this guy is going to bring. Um, accountability and uh things back to the players to where you know if you're you know i don't care if you're a five star or walk on you can play you're gonna play yeah well you know i was and, uh, i was reading some stuff on uh, uh the football brainiacs um today uh james hell had put out you know after they you know they've come back from spring break you know and they're back in kind of a um you know, kind of broke down what the defense has, you know, what's being said and what's being seen and, and so on and so forth. Um, first off is that, you know, the, the defense is going to constantly be moving is what, is what everybody said. The quarterback may come up and have an eight-man front. And, you know, a half a second into his cadence will drop into a four-man front. 
and you know those guys will shift over to the left and shift over to the right it's a constant and apparently the goal of this style of defense of Grinch's speed defense is to number one confuse the offensive line and number two confuse the quarterback and I like that confuse the offensive line theory absolutely because you screw up the well, block. I like that, and it also, I, I think it's also going to lead, uh, the, the confusion that you're talking about is also going to lead, I think we're going to have several more turnovers. Right, that's that's, that's the goal of it. Game. Yeah, that it's going to confuse the line to where they're going to miss a block. It's going to put pressure. The quarterback's going to be confused as well because it wasn't a front he was expecting. And somebody's going to miss an, exi- an assignment, and there's going to be a turnover. That's how this defense is supposed to be played. Will it play like that? <laughs> God, well, I hope you know, so. I, 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 I think that, like I said, this, this guy just seems to be. There seems to be an excitement and a buzz around it, you know, like it was when Lincoln was hired as our offensive coordinator. Right. You know, there people were telling you know this guy's you know unbelievably intelligent, and you know he's gonna, you know, cause, I mean, you know, we were used to putting up points, you know. With, Jason White and yeah. Dan Bradford and, you know, Randry Jones. I mean, but he took it to a whole new level. On, and I I do believe that uh, Mr. Grant's going to do the same thing. I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to watching some games and seeing some interceptions and some forced fumbles. And I want to make you know, I'm looking forward to somebody tackling somebody. That just, that's that's got to be the most frustrating thing is, you, you, you know, you're watching it and, yeah. You know, okay. How'd you miss that? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> That's... I, 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 I would rather, I would rather see a tackle that where you got the guy down than to see you lower your shoulder and run five five feet and hit somebody and knock them on their butt. Right. Because every time we do that, they just bounce off of us. So uh, I, I want to see him form tackle. And get some takeaways because, I mean, if you take the offense we've got and you give us two or three more possessions, you know, we're, you know, we might score 80 or 90 or 100 points in a game. On everybody. <laughs> you know, no. I mean, uh, we've got the players. I think that, I think they got a little complacent and just kind of, you know, well, wait a minute now. We can just throw his helmet on. We got this OU on our side. Yeah. Just kinda... I wish that was the case. <laughs> now, Rob, this Walk is out here. this is something I know that you'll like, and, 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 and Claude, you will too, is that another thing is that the D, they're saying that the DBs aren't playing off the receivers as they have been. The word is now that oh, the, so, the, that so the, we're on them. Yeah, the, <laughs> now the word is now the corners are on top of the receivers eighty percent of the time, and if they are playing off, they make sure and come down and get hands on the receivers, even if it's two or three yards downfield. So, well, then, well that'll cut down on giving them a giving them a first down, huh? Every other play, <laughs> well, we, yeah, we when we're so. playing, you know, at seven and eight yards off of them. Right, but uh, I'm you know, just. You know, playing that way, it, it's going to get it's going, the offense is going to get burnt on the deep balls every now and then. It's going to happen, but the idea that Grinch has is that he's you know take those chances, and he knows that if they tackle well, the big plays will get held to a minimum. Tackle well, tackle well, the big plays will be held to a minimum, and the word is that guys are getting pulled for missing tackles, or not, or they're not being in position to make the tackle as well. They should as well. They should. So apparently. Grinch is instilling this. If you if you're not where you're supposed to be to make the tackle, and if you are where you're supposed to be to make the tackle, and you don't, go sit down until we'll get somebody else out here, and then you That's might right. get another chance. Which you know, this is Oklahoma needs to right. <laughs> this is Oklahoma. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, all through our you know story of history, we we always had defense, always right. right. You know, and um, I, you know, I'm 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 like you know everybody else. I kind of like the uh, you know putting fifty on people. You know, like Barry you say, hey, hang a half hundred on them. The difference is, is we didn't let them hang forty nine on us. Right. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. I, I I think that this is I I really do believe that this is going to be a a shot in the arm that. 
you know, the rest of college football, you know, going to wake up one Saturday and go, oh, my goodness. Yeah, they now, got a defense yeah. now? <laughs> oh, dude, now yeah, I hope that's the case. Well, and which is what, you know, the national media has been saying the last two years. If Oklahoma had a defense, the problem with Oklahoma is their defense. They're going to score theirs. Can they keep, you know, everybody from scoring theirs? And the, question, the answer to that question when it came down to the big games was no. You know, we, we couldn't keep um, Georgia and we couldn't keep Alabama out of the end zone when we needed to. Right. So, um, but, uh, you know, the, the thing that I like, I mean, that you're seeing and, and they're, he's holding the players accountable. He's setting the bar high. He's expecting them to give max effort, max speed. Um, you know, I can't remember exactly what the quote was today that I saw. Uh, well, I actually retweeted it out on Twitter that it was, um, uh, don't, uh, Oh, I can't remember something like don't get used to or uh, don't get lazy on making big plays. You know, it was something he yelled out to the um, here. Let me just find it. Now, don't get more bored making plays. He, he hollered out to the defense. Don't get bored making plays. You know, basically is what he's telling him was don't be complacent. Mm. Don't keep going full bore. And, you know, I think as fans, you know, we've talked about it a hundred times that, you know, if if we were blitzing, you know, and we got burnt blitzing. Or we'd be okay. With we'd it. be okay because we weren't doing anything. Right. Up, <laughs> because we're getting beat anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and it, sometimes we'd line up and just, it confused me, we'd line up in a four-man front or a three-man front. We should have been in the four-man front on defense. I was like, right. you know, it was so... Um, it was like the, the the defense was like, okay, uh, don't worry about this. Baker's got us. Right. Don't worry about it. Kyle's got us. Right. You know, they had that kind of, I don't, I don't know, air about them or something. Yeah. You know, kind of like the Texas game. You know, we got down and, you know, they were looking over there. Well, okay, we got number one over here. We ain't got to worry about this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you realize, well, yeah, if we'd had another 30 seconds, yeah, we'd won that game. But unfortunately, I want them to, you know, I'd like to see a, you know, play against, you know, Texas Tech, you know, that can put up some points and, you know, score 40 on them and hold them to 14. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I want to see that get cut down. The, the, the points that we're giving up, I want to see that go way down. And like I said, I just – just by what I hear and, you know, and what you read and, you know, you know, what the players are putting out, you know, on their social media pages, that it, it's, it seems, it seems there's a new day dawning, you know, if I can, you know, steal a yeah. quote. Um, well, and you know, the players have got, got to have, the, uh, you know, especially the, the juniors and seniors and even the sophomores, there's got to be a little bit of pride in it because they know the last two years, They've kind of been beaten down in the media and by the fans. Not that the fans mm-hmm. are, is right, but you know, you know, they got to look inside themselves every now and then, going, "Yeah, I don't like it, but I can't argue with it." Right? You know, <laughs> well, you can't argue with stats, right? I mean, they're out there, and they're. I mean, stats are what they are. Am I right? Yeah. When 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 you're the 114th ranked defense, yeah. You know, you can't stand up and go, "Well, y'all don't know what you're talking about." No, I really don't. I'm not as smart as a lot of the people out there with football, but I am smart enough to know that 114th ain't good. You know, <laughs> not when not when you got the number one offense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, when you got the most potent offense out there, and then you got the most impotent defense out there. Do you like what I did with that, Rob? <laughs> I, I see where you went. I yeah, see what you there did you there. Go. Okay, that's that, that's a good word. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it just didn't and, work. And, and you know. It, 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 <laughs> It's frustrating as it was for us, for us fans, you know, to watch it. I, I feel like it was as frustrating for them too. I don't oh, know if yeah. they were, you know, weren't getting, you know, I, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Were they not getting coached, or was the coach just kind of, you know, just going through the motions? I mean, you know, we really don't know. But you know, it, it had to be rough on them because, you know. Yeah, because they were playing the guts out. And, and all anybody wanted to talk about was the defense. 
Yeah. You know, as bad as they were. Yeah, like, and and then, I'm sure that had to, like you said, that I, I think that's going to be a, you know, a shot of B12 in their butt, too. You know, hey, you, know, you ain't going to talk about us this way yeah. this year. Well, like I was going to say, talk about as us, bad as they were, gonna get equal time. they still played their guts out. You know, they, they were yes, still they playing did. hard. And, and yeah, they got, you know, they got nothing to hang their hat up. I mean, you know, uh, college football playoffs two years in a row. And, you know, I'm not a big, you know, guarantee guy, but I'm, I'll guarantee we'll be there again this year. Um, but I think you're going to see a, you know, a, a different result. I just, you know, I, I think that this Mr. Grants and Mr. Riley are going to give Saban, Herman, Dabo, they're going to be waking up going, just like I said, oh, my God, these guys got a defense now. Yeah. I don't want to play them. Yeah, if you put out a defense that can back up that offense, you know. You know. And we'd be unstoppable. Yeah, be pretty I, good. I don't think there'd be anybody in the country that could play with us if we if we just had, just had you know, something that when we put our defense on the field, they're like, geez, these guys are as good as their offense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Claude. Right, uh, right now, what we got to do right now, it's time for what we call the Sooner Bucket of Questions. The Sooner <laughs> Bucket. Oh, <no. laughs> so, hey, hey, hey is, is he your Vanna White to uh, your past yeah. <laughs> I'm prettier than Vanna White. <laughs> yes. Now, okay, I got you. I'll just, I'll just check in. You know. So, what the Sooner Bucket? You got to get some music for that. <laughs> Sooner bucket of question, uh, or it might be about Sooner football. It might be about movies. It might be some of the dumbest things you ever heard somebody asking somebody about anything. But it's just to kind of kick up conversation and have a laugh. So, <laughs> Rob, do well, you? Uh, okay, so I just pull these things out randomly, Claude. I just and want it, you to know that. And it is literally a bucket full of questions. Yeah. Sooner Lisa, like, questioned us, and so, Rob, we had to put a picture out of I the bucket, out. Of que- a yep. bucket of questions. Yep. So. All right, here's question number one. Are you ready, Claude? Yes, sir. If you were a dictator of a small island nation, what crazy dictator stuff would you do? <laughs> there you oh, go. Oh, this was a great question. Uh, remember, we got to keep this kind of yeah, clean now. Yeah, so. P- PG-13, PG-13. I would have a law where I didn't have to do anything. I would have somebody to clip my toenails Turned the TV on, fed me, had one of those big leafy fans. Uh, that would be it. I, I wouldn't have to do anything. All I'd have to do is sit. And if I wanted to get up and go somewhere, they could carry my chair. <laughs> I, would be, I would be the, the first form of a dictator. I wouldn't. I would be the lazy dictator. <laughs> All right. So you'd be kind of like the you know the old uh, uh, no, Egyptian movies with the. Pharaoh and everything. Yeah, they, they the carried, Yeah, they carried him around you know, everywhere. If, if, this, if this is my island, you know, it's my rules, and if you don't like it, you can <laughs> swim or you can start clipping my toenails. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. All right. I just figured he'd say, I'd just do all the bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And I'd make sure I had, I got to watch Dead Portal and Gone with the Wind every day. <laughs> Carrie, what would you do? And, I, and I'd be happy. Yeah. You know, like, you know. So, I don't know what would I do, Rob. I, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, I would probably kind of like Cloud. I have somebody waiting on me, hand and foot. You know, I got married. That didn't work out for me. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, know boy. if being a yeah, dictator. That, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. So. That's one of those myths. That yeah. doesn't happen. <laughs> now, now, when we first got married, Teresa used to, you know, I'd get up and she'd set out my clothes for me. She'd make a pot of coffee. And one morning I got, I woke up and she decided she wasn't going to do that anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was like six well, months Peter, into the marriage. You so. just decided they didn't want to do it. When I first did, I just woke up and there was a, a bag at the door. <laughs> <laughs> but. I don't know. Uh, over. <laughs> um, I would probably, it would probably kind of be the same. I mean, I would, I wouldn't do anything mean. I wouldn't like. No, I wouldn't know, be a mean person. You know, um, but they would. Like you were a longhorn fan. Yeah. That, you know, there would be no <laughs> orange allowed. That's one. Yeah. Cut well, down all the orange trees. Yeah. What about you, Rob? What? 
Oh, what kind well, of dictator stuff would you do? Well, I'd probably just say, you know, I, everybody's got to leave because <laughs> I just want, you know, to be on this island yeah, by right. myself. Rob doesn't like crowds. So. <laughs> <laughs> not a big crowd guy. I understand. Not, not going to lie. All right. Going on. Question number two. Are you ready? Yes. If you had a warning label, what would yours say? <laughs> well, Claude's got warning. two good ones. I know. Yeah, yeah. Warning. I had no control out of what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> All righty. Yep. I, the brain and mouth are not connected. <laughs> so the term think before you speak does not work with Claude Mills. All right. No, one, one, if one's on, the other one's off. <laughs> No filter. <laughs> yeah, they all work together. Okay, last one. Last one. Here we go. Claude. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to turn this into a question because it's more of a statement. But Tom Cruise portrays a high school football player looking for a scholarship and clashes with his coach, Craig T. Nelson. What movie? Yes. What movie? What was the movie? Uh -huh. Yeah. All the right moves. Okay. That's great. <laughs> now, can you name the high school for bonus points? Uh, Ampire. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. You got it, man. Good job, Clyde. <laughs> Yeah. Colors were black and gold. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you watch that a hundred times? Or? That high. <laughs> where, where, what is it? Do you have that on right now? Claude's watching that right now, aren't you? <laughs> no, it's, it's the only Tom Cruise movie I like. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we got to give uh, you an update. Are you watching the uh, Bedlam baseball game? Yes, I am, and no. we are not doing that. Yeah, it's it's ugly right now. They got they're just getting lucky. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I was wondering if uh, if if it'd be okay with y'all, could we can uh, take a couple of minutes and, and and give a shout out to our uh, our softball group ladies. Oh yeah, you know what? I was going to bring that up they with are, you, Claude, because I know you're a big they fan. Are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we've got uh, we've got a couple, you know, players that I think should be in contention for national player of the year. Uh, Kaylee Clifton at second. Um, Sarah Merrill third, uh, and this incoming class we've got is just is just going to carry this tradition more. But this this class of their seniors now they have just been unbelievable. I mean it's 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 an absolute uh, you know thrill to listen to them on TV or on the radio and uh, watch them on TV. These, these ladies are amazing, and if you're if you're out there and you're listening and, and you haven't paid attention to these girls, you need to give them a view and give them a listen. They are, they are yeah. representing this fine university of ours uh, outstandingly. I mean, I just, I, I, you just can't say enough about them. Well, let me ask you well, this. Coach, um, they just, they're just amazing. I hope that uh, a lot of the, you know, sooner folks that they're out there that maybe, you know, just watch football or just watch basketball, Give, give these give these girls a give these girls a peek because I'm I'm telling you they are fantastic great uh, uh, athletes great human beings just I mean so do you think a, they have enough pitching to, to to win it all? Uh yeah I, I I've got I, I'd say when when this when this this senior class were freshmen and they won their first one I said they'd win three out of four. Hmm. And they've got two. I think they win it all. It, and it wouldn't shock me. I know this people were going to laugh. But the way that they are they can turn their bats on, you know, at the you know blink of an eye, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't lose another game. Really? They're that good. You know, I just was They're, wondering if the pitching was, you know, because obviously they can hit with anybody. But uh, that you know the pitching is not what it used to be. It's not, but it's different. If it's as effective, it's just different. Yeah. Instead of having you know Paige Lowry come out and people just go, well, I, you know, I'm just going to stand there and watch this, you know, uh, 
69 mile an hour softball come in that looks like Randy Johnson is throwing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, Paige Parker, you know, who just was just consistent. Uh, they've got the flame that comes in now. The, that's what Shanny I call flame. her. The Boger, Shanny, Shanny flame. flame uh-huh. um, and then they've got, you know, Nicole Mendez who can come in and do a change of pace. Uh, G. Juarez is, is just almost unhittable. Her name is Giselle. Uh, or Conrad, <laughs> Giselle. Or Mariah Lopez. I mean, they just, it, it's a different pitching staff, but the outcome to me is the same. Yeah. Instead of two people doing it, it's now four. Well, Mariah is carrying the, she's carrying the lion's share of the load. Mariah Lopez is, but the, the freshmen yeah. definitely are talented, but, uh, there's some good teams out there this year. You know, the teams that beat us, what, were they Washington and UCLA? Is that the teams that beat us? I think the yeah. – uh, In the final, I, yeah, I in think, the World Series they did. Yeah, you've got uh, – uh, Washington's good, UCLA's good, Florida State's going to be good. Um, um, what two teams beat us this I year? Just, I, who, who have we lost to I this just, year, Claude? We lost to UCLA and Florida State. Florida State, okay. Uh, and um, uh, I just, they seem to have a, just, I mean, it's a machine. When you watch it, it's like watching a machine. Well, I can, and it just, <clears throat> I can tell you this, because, you know, I since I work at the university, I go to most of the games. And there's a huge difference between the way our girls look and the way most of the teams that come in here, girls look, our girls are athletes. Oh, yeah. They're, you know, they're muscular. They're, you know, you can, you can just look at them and know that they're athletes and, and nothing against them. But you know, when the, when the Texas techs come in or the, you know, the girls from Baylor come, I mean, they're just, they're just girls. I, you know, and like I say, yeah, I don't mean absolutely. any disrespect to anybody. I'm just saying our girls look different. <laughs> Now you can you can tell that they take the uh, uh, the practice and the nutrition and the, mm-hmm. the the training and the weight training and stuff like that. They take all of that very seriously. Mm-hmm. Now, and uh, you're right; they look they look like grown athletes. I mean, they yeah. they, they just do. I mean, yeah. I if, I would like to see them in an exhibition game against uh, the the girls that have went on to play professionally. Mm. Yeah, and I, I they'd hold their own. Wouldn't surprise me if they beat them. Hmm. But uh, I just, you know, if if you if you haven't got a chance, folks, go out and see them, or give them a listen on the radio or the TV because they they are flat doing some really good things for our university. And again, uh, congratulations to Coach Kruger and the basketball team. Uh, kind of a little bit of a down year, but I thought we came back. Uh, Baseball's rolling. Uh, Skip's got them going, ranked nineteenth in the country. Uh, now, Claude, our- Claude, real quick, I do. I, I got to share a little pet peeve that I kind of r- ran across the last couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, and it's nothing horrible towards Sooner fans, but it is not Oklahoma girls softball or Oklahoma women's softball. It is Oklahoma softball. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot yeah, of people. I, 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 get to, I, I usually say sooner softball. Yeah, sooner softball. It's not sooner ladies softball. Sooner women's softball. It's sooner softball. Yeah, but that's not wrong. Yes, it is. No, it's I not. Always, There's always, softball always, players. Always, They're the only ones that play. The, a tweet. They, the word that, a they don't say game, Oklahoma. You know? They don't say Oklahoma men's football. Well, I know, but it, they don't have to. They don't have to say that it's women's softball. I know, but they don't not well, have yeah, to. Now, 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 in all fairness. In all fairness, I have heard that phrase. Now, I, I just don't. I, to me, it's Oklahoma disrespectful. Uh, to me, it's disrespectful to the athletes. Now, if it's a sport that both genders play, like soccer, okay. But Oklahoma we don't have a soccer. Yeah, team. Oklahoma doesn't have a men's soccer right. team. Okay, so it's Oklahoma soccer. Ah. But if we did, you would, you know, just like men's tennis, women's tennis. Oklahoma men's gymnastic, Oklahoma, you have to differentiate, but we only have one softball team. So it's disrespectful to say women's softball? Yes. I don't know. College doesn't have all. men's softball. I know, but there's. Well, then, well, then they are women. Now, then now, why do you need this? That's not necessarily true. The, the, they had the, uh, they had the uh, what is that? <laughs> the, uh, what is it they play in college? Intramurals? Play sport? 
In a mural. No, you can play sports. That yeah. What's mural. that word? In a mural. Yeah. <laughs> so there is men's softball. Yeah, but it's not. It's not collegiate it's softball. It's not sanctioned by the sanctioned okay. by the university. I, I get. And my apologies. Uh, ladies, I'm not <laughs> no, you didn't say it. I'm just saying I, I've seen a lot, and it just—it's like it's Oklahoma softball. You don't have, you know, you don't have to say Oklahoma women's softball. You don't. Yeah, but it's not disrespectful if you do. I feel like it is. Okay, how come? Because you I, know I, that I, it's I, women I, playing I, 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 it, I'll, just I'll, like I'll, you know it's I'll, men I'll, playing football. I'll tend to agree with. I'll agree with you on that. I'll, <laughs> you, I'll, have you I'll, I'll, I'll take that. have you seen an Oklahoma <laughs> softball shirt that says Oklahoma <laughs> women's softball? No, but I don't think it makes a difference. If it, because they are women, mine my, my, my just says Sooner softball on it. <laughs> yeah, Sooner softball. That's I mean, they're it. women though. But you know they're women. I know that I know they're women. <laughs> but I don't think it's disrespectful to say it's Oklahoma women. Why do you need it to be differentiated? I don't from? necessarily need it to be different, but I don't. But I don't just feel call it what it is: Oklahoma softball, Sooner softball, Oklahoma Sooner softball. Well, we just popped a two-run homer. <laughs> Finally, spoiler yeah. alert. Um, the, the Oklahoma, actually, actually, just so we, uh, hold on, Claude. The, just so we the, just so we know, the Oklahoma men's baseball team yes, just popped the into <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. I also, don't a like shout out to our uh, to our men's and women's gymnastics, and of course the men's and women's tennis. It's a good time. It's a it, it's fun to be a Sooner fan. I mean, I, I actually we're loaded in all kinds of sports here. I mean, we're just. Saturday, I you watched know. the women's gymnastic Big yeah. Twelve meet on TV. They're good, aren't they? Yeah, they yes, almost they, are fantastic. they almost lost it there at the end. That, but that freshman that came in on that floor exercise and did the quadruple loop a little bit of backflip, double do land on her feet, whatever it was, that freshman came in yeah. and smoked it. Listen, that girl named yeah, it's Maggie. amazing to me that they can do that kind of stuff, and I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> I can't even get out of my bed half the time. <laughs> the, the triple That's loop. That's kind of how I am. I'm like, you know, I get out and I, I start hearing things. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't hear. I didn't, I didn't know bones could make that noise. Yeah, but no, they, know, so. they had they had one one young lady uh, uh, landed bad. She didn't get a bad score. It was like a nine point four. But they were needing something like 9.75 out of the last three. So that made the last two have to get like 9.87s. And they got them. The last two girls came so, out and smoked it. Do you boy. know how many in a row that is? How many Big 12 championships in a row? Is it nine or 12? I can't remember how they talked about it. Eight, eight, nine, or something like that. I didn't, did eight. I just say eight, nine hundred? Eight. I think it's yeah. eight or 12. I, believe it's, that's, I, believe I think it's eight. Eight, eight in a row. I think eight. Yeah. So. But it's a fun time to be a, to be a fan of the, of the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, I mean there's. I a, mean, and, and, and you know, like I said, I, that's why I, you know I like this because you know I'm constantly on uh, Twitter during the softball games. I mean that's my and 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 and, and in all fairness, uh, I, they kind of that team because like I said I remember I got hurt on the job and I was out for two and a half years of work. And Sooner Athletics and the softball team, football team, they, you know, not to sound, you know, melodramatic or anything, but they kind of kept me alive. Yeah. Kept me from getting depressed and, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and of course, you know, you guys were right in there too, you know, and, you know, inviting me to, you know, the little get together and having me on your show and stuff. I said, you know, it's, uh, it's been, Fantastic, but like I said, I just want to make sure we got a little shout out for them because they just they they're really really just really good. I mean, it's just you know you wish they had a better word. But, <laughs> you know, I, I I just I, I don't. I it's mean, called I wish Sooner, I it's it. called Sooner Magic. You know, all the way across the board. So that's yeah, what, that's we, what we yeah, have. Yeah, we'll, we can go. We'll we'll give it the magic. You know. Yeah, yeah I like that. So now the only thing I want to see is I want to see Boomer and Sooner get out there and try to hit the ball off of the, our pitchers. <laughs> <laughs> well, now um, let's get on a little bit back onto football here. Uh, I was reading on uh, 24-7 Sports, according to Brad Crawford uh, with 24-7 Sports. It's an article that's out there that Oklahoma has the third best quarterback, running back, wide receiver combo coming back. That is behind – Clemson has the number one trio coming back. Bama has the number two. 
and we were in front of Ohio State, who they say has the number four, and Nebraska has the number five trio. So our trio, I put combo here, but our trio is Jalen Hurts. We're assuming everybody's already named him quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Kennedy Brooks. I think that's a debate right there. Yeah, that's a debate. And C.D. Lamb. So that's the third best quarterback running back trio in the country. What do you think about that? Now, my thought just informed me that Clemson's uh, number one receiver, Tories what? Yeah. Tories ACL today. Yeah. Ooh, really? Yeah, yeah I saw that too. Yeah. Is that that? Um, when they, was it Higgins? Was it Higgins, Chase? Higgins? Rogers. Rogers, okay. But, um, uh, so, um, but they got the Clemson has Trevor Lawrence, um, Travis, I can't, what's, well, how do you pronounce this? ETN? ETN. ETN. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, T Higgins, Justin Ross, and the aforementioned Rogers. And then, uh, Bama has Tua, Najee Harris, and Jerry Judy. He's got two first names. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, Listen, this, uh, this, I, uh, this, this trio that you're about to name from Ohio State, I think they're highly underrated, to be honest with you. Justin Fields, J.K. Dobbins, and K.J. Hill. Yeah. But, well, the, the thing about Dobbins is when Dobbins gets frustrated, he tends to do – he tends to put the ball on the carpet or not run the right way or not run with a purpose or whatever. He just he, he seems like they, they lose him. And the fields, I'm not real – I don't have a real beat on him yet. Um, of course, you know, Alabama's Alabama. Uh, until Lawrence does it another year, I'm not sold on him either. Hmm. Um yeah, Lawrence looks too much like one of the Hanson brothers to me to be. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a he looks like a Hanson brother. You're right. You're absolutely correct. Uh, the one thing that's in his favor is he eats fast food. So <laughs> uh, I'll give him that. I want to see him. I want to see him do it with a rebuilt defense. Yeah. But well, boy, they just man, they might, went out, they tore up Alabama's defense last year. Oh, did. Golly. Yes, they did. Man. I believe that ETN kid, I believe he will be a Heisman finalist this yeah. year. Uh, they if you to you know, I thought it was going to be a closer game, you know, like it was in the first half, but man, that second half, Clemson just came out even close. and smoked them, boy. Yep. And um, actually, actually, similar to what we did, our offense came out and smoked them from the second quarter on. <laughs> I don't want to talk yeah. about it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 it, 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 it's like one of those uh, one of those uh, you know, you got a scam on your arm and you want to pick the scam because <laughs> you know what's going to happen. Mm. Well, and see, you don't want to relive the pain. Yeah, but see, you know, one of the yeah. things that I do like is that Oklahoma's offense could, and I think they will, and it says unlock Jalen Hurts' superstar potential. And I think Lincoln Riley, uh, I know, Claude, you th- feel the same way. I think Rob does. He's he's the best offensive coach mind out there and the best quarterback's coach out there. He knows what these kids can do and puts them in a position to be For successful. sure he is, yeah. And he, he's one of those once in a generation. Yeah, lines. possibly. Quite possibly. He's the Barry Switzer of his time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I think, mean, <laughs> we're only two years into it, so that's a little, yeah. that may be a little bit premature. <laughs> well, you know, but I mean, so far, it looks you know, good. Now, now in, in all fairness, you know, now, when Barry was there, uh, you know, when, when, when he passed, there's, you know, only two things could happen. You caught it or you or got intercepted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we only did it in pregame warm ups, but. At Lincoln Riley, like I said, is that once, you know, in the generational, you know, mind that comes along that just, you know, you're like, you know, other people are sitting there going, damn it, Christmas. He, you know, uh, he had such a, uh, I'm following is not the word I'm looking for, but I, I think he brought in the college football fans that were just casual. 
You know right. what I mean? Right. Would watch it every now and then. But he was like, oh, my God, I want to see this team play. I mean, look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but he's, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, these two together, we've got to come up with some kind of name for this defense and our offense. You know, we could be, you know, this is. Yeah. Well, because uh, the offense, the offense, people are, you know, including myself, are getting tired of it being called the, uh, what are they calling it? The, the air raid. Air raid because it's not an air raid. It's not an air raid. Yeah, it's not an air raid. Yeah, it's, it's not an air raid. It's it's a punch you we in gotta, the mouth. We gotta, and, we gotta get together. You got We need to set out a question. Maybe you guys could do this. And name our offense and defense. Yeah, I feel a poll I'd like question to see coming. What would come back to? <laughs> trying to think. Maybe and maybe you know uh, for the offense the double hook. The you double know, hook. The double hook. You know, it's a boxing term, but you know you got the run and. We call it the running gun off. I don't know. I mean, we got to figure out something because it's not an air raid. raid. Yeah, because it's not an no, air it's, raid. It's no, it's not an air raid. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, you know, even the you know the national people, you know, the ESPN and stuff, they just call it Oklahoma. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we don't have an name for it either. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to. We need to get that kind of out there and see if we can get a you know, get some stuff going and see if we can get a, a name for our. Uh, our offense and our defense, because uh, evidently our uh, I'd heard somebody said that our uh, uh, our defense was going to be. Um, I think they're at speed as, speed D is what is what they're calling it speed yeah D. speed D that's yeah. The, yeah the speed defense yeah. um, and if you said ours was a speed offense you'd be shortchanging it so yeah. that we can't use that well, if if. If Lincoln puts um, Kyler in the number one, you know, overall draft pick, and then Jalen Hurts wins the Heisman and is the under, uh, number one uh, draft pick next year, we'd either call our offense the Heisman or the Riley, <laughs> the Riley offense. <laughs> so, the Reisman. I got the it. Reisman. I got it. I got it. <laughs> what is it? It's the Rock. It's the Rock and Riley <laughs> offense. <laughs> And, uh, okay, right now it's time for one of my favorite parts and one that Rob likes to sit here and roll his eyes at me at. <laughs> I do not. Um, is what we call sooner, not a sooner, Claude, okay? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is give you a name, and that name okay. is a either a name of a sooner who was a NFL draft pick, or it is not. And you get bonus points, but you don't win any prizes. <laughs> Um, if uh, uh, you could tell us the name of you know what the person's name was, what so- game are you watching, Blue? <laughs> what game are you watching? Rob, Rob just about oh came out of his goodness. skin just now. <laughs> he was so out; it's it hurts. That's how out he oh, was. Oh my this god! Look at that! Oh my god! <laughs> hey, I'm coming down there, Blue. Uh, did you go to the? I got oh, to the he's out. They're gonna re- they're That's- gonna return it. Terrible! You yeah, gotta review that. Yeah, they're gonna review it. Sorry, well, sorry. sorry. Well, they, you know you're out. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do that. No, that, Rob, that, 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 that on the state guy telling our second baseman, uh, I, "I'm out." Yeah, I know I'm out. <laughs> yeah, he knows he's out. Go sit down. Yeah, they're all walking up to him. Go, yeah. man, just go sit down. Just go, <laughs> punk. Yeah, you're wearing orange. <laughs> anyway, Look, sorry. And he, he's not even looking at the play. <laughs> he's looking at the. Yeah, he you're not knows. looking at the runner. You're looking at her. You're looking at his Nike shoes. He was out by my. Are, are, how do you? He goes, he goes. Wait a minute. Are, are those jump, man? How do you not call <laughs> this guy out? Ding <laughs> right in the chest. He's out. Okay. And the guy's still two feet from the bag. Hey, Claude. Sorry. Yes, if sir. You miss me and Terry get to make fun of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss <laughs> the suit or not, sir. I will tell you this much. People that have made fun of me, the list is long but distinguished. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first one. Charles Jefferson. Sooner, not a sooner. Charles Jefferson. Not a sooner. You are correct. Who is Charles Jefferson? Charles Jefferson was the uh, big time football player for the uh in the uh Fast times oh my God, Claude! Man. <laughs> Claude, Claude is, knows his movies. He is knocking it out of the who, park. Who played him? 
and, 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 and they were called the Wolf Pack. Yeah, the Ridgemont Wolves. And who played Charles Jefferson? Oh, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Oh. Face. Uh, come on. Fourth Whitaker. There you go. Wow. <laughs> three for three on. Man. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's see here. Um, Rick Bryan. They called him out. Rick Bryan, Sooner, not a Sooner. Hey, let's say it this way. Rick, Rick Bryan is Bryan. a Sooner from Toledo, Oklahoma. <laughs> you are correct. He was the ninth overall pick in the 1984 uh, draft. First round, the ninth overall pick. Um, was it the Atlanta Falcons? Yes, it was. Look at hey. you go. <laughs> Man, nobody's ever scored this high, Claude. Okay. Ralph Neely, sooner or not a sooner? Ralph Neely. I bet it sounds familiar. Uh, I'm going to say he's a sooner. You are correct. He was the second uh, f- second round pick. Second round, 15th pick in the 1965 draft to Rob's Houston Oilers. And he was also... All right, love you blue. (laughs) He was also a two-time Super Bowl champion with somebody who obviously wasn't the Houston Oilers. (laughs) (laughs) Why you got to do that? Why you got to do that, Terry? uh, Neely uh, played for... He won his Super Bowls with... uh, Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, you could tell me anybody, and I wouldn't know whether you were telling the truth or not. So. <laughs> I, think, I think it was the Dallas Cowboys. Well, like I said, we know it wasn't the Houston Oilers. So, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they don't. Okay, uh, next one, Cam Tucker, Cameron Tucker. Sooner, not a sooner. Cameron Tucker was not a sooner. Who is Cameron slash Cam Tucker? Who? Yeah. Do you know who Cam Tucker is? And who he... Cam Tucker. No, you know, guys got me. I'm drawing a blank. He, he, he uh, is played by Eric Stone Street on Modern Family. He uh, played for the... He, in the TV show, he played for the Illinois Fighting Illini. Mm. Um, oh, okay, I've, n- I've never seen Modern Family. That's uh, why I didn't okay. know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Carter Rutherford, sooner, not a sooner. Carter Rutherford, not a sooner. Okay. If you know this, I, you are correct. He is not a sooner. Do you know who he is? Carter Rutherford. Uh, if he knows this, this is I'm just going to turn everything off and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> it's over when you get this. <laughs> Carter Rutherford. Hold on. I'm... Are you Googling it? He's Googling it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I would, I would never cheat y'all like that. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. I got a blank. He's played by John Kroninsky on the, the movie Leatherheads, hmm. uh, which is a football Oh, George Clooney. Yeah, George Clooney football movie. Okay, all right. John okay. John Kroninsky plays Jim on The Office. That's the guy who plays Jim. Yeah, it's okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, and and in uh and in Leatherheads, they play Boomer Sooner in the last game when uh, the Leatherheads come out. The the yeah, song they, they called complain. something else. Didn't yeah, they? they called it something else, but it was Boomer Sooner, and we know it. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, I started out on fire, and then I lost it. <laughs> let's see. Um, ready for sooner, not a sooner. Dick Favor. Dick Favor. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now. I, now I've I've heard this. I've heard this. this I've, 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 I've I've heard this name. Dick Favor was a center. You are correct. He was a, he was a, the uh, 17th pick in the third round in the 1940 draft to the Philadelphia Eagles. So that's a long that's time ago. <laughs> uh, okay, you want to do one more, Rob? One more. One more. 
One more, one more, one more. Yes, also Charles Jefferson wanted to buy tickets to Earth, Wind, and Fire because he's taking his little brother. <laughs> <laughs> From uh, Mike DeMond. Uh, let's see. Morris Buttermaker. Sooner, <laughs> not a sooner. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What was that? Morris Buttermaker. Yeah, I guarantee he knows this one. Morris Buttermaker was not a sooner. Okay, who was he? Morris Buttermaker was either Walter Matthau <laughs> or, or uh, Billy Bob Thornton, who was the coach of the Bad News yeah, Bears. Yeah, depending on which one of those you watched. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, we always got to go with a, Walter Matthau. He was an exterminator. Yeah. Buttermaker, and what was it? Uh, Chico's Bell Bonds was on the... Yes, Chico's <laughs> Bell Bonds in the original... And in the in the uh, the Billy Bob Thornton one, I think it wasn't Chico's Bell Bonds was sponsored or somebody else. It was a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> but see, you know, with movies like that, you always fall back to the original. If there's a remake, you always fall back to the original. You know. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, e- even as but much I, as I, I like, the, <laughs> as I like, you know, the the uh, the new Longest Yard, you know, uh, with Adam Sandler, the the original was best. I mean. Well, yeah, the original was best. Now, I, the, the, there was a couple of things that made the Adam Sandler one good. There's nothing more exciting than to see Burt Reynolds walk up with an OU hat on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Brian Bosworth. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, and, and, of course, uh, Michael Irvin. I've got to give you that. You're yeah. right. The, the, the first one was the, was the best. Yeah. Because it was more, I mean, it was really more like a prison movie. There was... You know, those guys, there was nothing special about any of those. Ex- um, you know, the, the. And I remember actually I remember actually going down to McAllister and, and watching that one where the cons played the cops. Yeah. <laughs> you know, down there at, at, at McAllister. They yeah. played Tulsa Police Department. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. And I used to used to go to the prison rodeo every year down there. They don't have it no yeah, more. Yeah, prison rodeo. Yes, yeah. sir. But I said, you, you have not seen Money the Hard Way until you see prisoners playing Money the Hard Way. And so, you know, $500 on a bull's horns, a, a lot more in prison than it is apparently on the outside. Cause those guys would, uh, yeah, <laughs> I really don't want to find out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll uh, take the 500 on the outside yeah. uh, <laughs> every time. But so oh, Paul, are you going to make it up to the, to the spring game? Yes, we'll be there. Uh, uh, I got my tickets in the mail uh, last week. Yeah, so, are yep, you, we will be there. Are you expecting uh, to see anything exciting or just excited to go watch Oklahoma football? Because you know they're not going to show I, I'm, just, I'm just excited to get back on the uh, Palace on the Prairie. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just ready. I mean, you know, um, people don't understand that uh, – Everybody's always wanting to touch heaven. Well, just come to Norman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now here's another question. Okay, are you going to be able to make the uh, home and home game that has been scheduled with Clemson for 2035 and 2036? Well, uh, <laughs> I will be seventy mm, sixteen years. I'll be seventy. Um, and it ain't the years, it's the mileage. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm going to try, uh, and, uh, uh, uh and kind of like, I think that's a, I think that would be a really cool series to see, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, but thing, uh, here, here's the thing that's really going to make you feel old, Claude. Is that the players that will be playing in that are not born yet? <laughs> <laughs> so my question is: is is, is I need a claim Yeah, is you know they're they're some of them are two years old right now, and others are not. So basically, Lincoln to start recruiting for that's going to have to start going to the the daycares and preschools. Around Oklahoma and Texas, probably not a good look for him yeah. right now. <laughs> but that's crazy. I mean, that they they've scheduled, they've got it scheduled, and it was announced today. But the players that will be playing in it basically aren't alive today. 
Yeah, that, uh, what did they say? It was a $2 million buyout if you didn't hold up your end of the bargain. Yeah, but <laughs> so. And that is kind of that is kind of strange. They're scheduling a ball game for people who aren't born yet. <laughs> so, you know, I wonder who else is going to be on that schedule. You know, there's no guarantee that the Big 12 will still be around. Um, you know. And- now, let's not, let's, let you know, now, now, let's, let's think about something. Lincoln's got a couple of small children. There's no, there's no, women could be playing quarterback at that time. <laughs> then it wouldn't be called Oklahoma men's football anymore. It would be called. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to use men's football. You're right. <laughs> uh, but, well, hell, by then, yeah, I, I mean, I Bob, Bob may have, you know, may have grandkids that'll be playing for Lincoln then. <laughs> well, uh, I, 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 um, I, I got a Bob, Bob, Coach Bob siding for you. Okay. Um, I said I brought my son back, and I want y'all to meet him because he's interested in what y'all do. That's what he wants to do. Uh, I flew out Friday after work and uh, flew from Oklahoma City to Phoenix, and I had a four-hour layover. I was going to fly into Sacramento, pick him up, and then we turned around, jumped in his truck, and drove back to Oklahoma. Right. We were at the Phoenix airport, and I'm standing there talking to somebody. I don't know how many people yelled boomer at me. <laughs> I mean, it, it was amazing. All the smart people. All and, the smart people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm sitting there talking to this guy, and Coach Bob and the family walked by. And I yelled, boomer, and I called him Bob. I was like, oh, God, I feel bad. I should have called him Coach. <laughs> and nobody even was like, had a, a clue who he was. They were in like vacation clothes, him yeah. and the whole family. I remember his wife and uh, his daughters and sons, they were kind of laughing at me because they yelled Boomer really loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I called everybody. I'm like, oh, no, my mom's just walked by. <laughs> and then he disappeared. And I was like, oh, man, I should have snapped a picture or something, you know, or walked up and, you know, talked to him or something. So I'm sitting there, I guess throughout this four-hour layer, I happened to look over across the aisle there to this little store, and he was standing in line getting a newspaper. So I walked, waited for him to come out, and he was by himself. I wouldn't have bothered him if he'd been with his family yeah. you know, or anything like that. He walked out, and I walked up, and I said, hey, coach, how you doing? He shook my hand, and I said, can I get a quick picture with you? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, well, I, I don't know how to use my camera. <laughs> 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 and he looked at me, and then he looked at my phone, and he goes, uh, I, that's not the kind of phone I have. And I'm like, okay, well, let me get a little picture. He goes, oh, hold on a minute. So he starts messing with it, and he goes, oh, here it is. <laughs> and he took a picture of it. I'm always excited to take a picture with him, and I'm like, I, I don't know how to use my camera. Oh, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> But that was pretty cool. I, 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 it, of all places, I mean, I, I live in Guthrie, which is 50 minutes from Norman. Yeah. It, uh, I've been over there a hundred times, and I've never seen him except on the football field. Yeah. Man, you're and then you know, right there, and then they just walked by. I was like, kind of cool. I thought I'd share that with you. Yeah. And he figured out how Everybody to work. He, he figured out how to work your phone. How long have you had your phone, Claude? Uh, since God was a boy. Okay, so he figured out how to take a picture with your phone in less time, a lot less time than you've owned your phone. Well, yeah, but you got to understand something. <laughs> Me and technology is like putting an elevator in an outhouse. Yeah. It just doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. Well, that's cool that yeah, he did, just, you know, that he could have went, you know, well, too bad, you know, there yeah. was your chance. No, but, he, was, he was very polite. Like I said, I... I uh, I wasn't gonna, you know, bother him, you know, if he was with his family or something. But I just had to look over there and. Um, but seeing the other thing there. is, the thing that you can, you know, rest easy on, Claude. And I'm saying this with all, you know, kindness and stuff that you probably were that night and will be on several more occasions. A discussion that Bob Stoops has sitting around with his buddies drinking beer. 
Oh, yeah, I can just hear it. Hey, I got one for you. Yeah. I missed this guy at Phoenix, and he was probably 50, and yeah. he didn't know how to work a phone. Yeah, wanted to take a picture, and I said, sure, and he goes, well, I don't know how to work my phone. So I had to figure yeah, out how to work this man's phone. <laughs> I can just see it. One time I'm going to walk into Marty McMillan's over there. Matty McMillan, he's going to be bartending. Yeah. He goes, hey, that's that guy I was telling you all about last year. <laughs> so, you know, that, that guy right there. That, that's something <laughs> you can rest easy on is that you know that you will be a topic of a Bob, you know, Bob Stoops conversation. He's going to tell people about you. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, that, that's a claim to fame that not many people have, Claude. So, you know. Yeah, I, I, w- I would wear it proudly. I, I know I would. I'm serious. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. I, 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 I'm quite excited. I've I told lots of people about it. I, I, was, I was quite content. I mean, I was I was, I was very happy. Uh, you know, like I said, I just, uh, but I never thought about what y'all just thought about. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Well, have you ever run into anybody done? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> Do we, you know? Right. Yeah. So. Rob, do you got anything else Man, you want to cover? Good. We're good. Yeah. Uh, in case anybody's wondering, I know it's the day after, but it's in the uh, bottom of the fifth. Uh, Oklahoma still behind five to two, uh, with a runner on second and two outs. We're gonna come back and win this. Oops. Yes, we are. So, but we're hey, gonna have a little sooner magic, gentlemen. I want to. I want to compliment y'all on your. Uh, Sooner and auto sooner, I think that is a really cool thing. Well, thank you. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed playing that. Yeah, <laughs> I got a big kick out of that. <laughs> um, and and uh, you know, like I said, guys, it, it you know it was great to you know get a chance to talk with y'all again. Um, just just some fine fine folks y'all are, and uh, uh, looking forward to seeing y'all, of course, at the games and uh, uh, visiting with you some more and. Uh, like I said, folks, you know, if you're listening out there, get these guys to follow, sign up for their, uh, you know, for their podcast, get on, visit with them, and uh, um, let's just keep doing this little Sooner family we got going here and uh, keep rolling along. Like I said, guys, it was really good to hear from you. Again, you know, thanks for swinging by and, you know, dropping me off some uh uh, food and, and some clothes there at the hospital. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. And, uh, Cla- and Cla- you know, the feelings mutual, you know, we, you know, we appreciate those kinds of words. And, you know, that's one of the things that Rob and I and, and my wife, you know, Teresa have said, and even Caleb, even though he doesn't do the podcast is that we've met some of the nicest, neatest people, uh, here in the last 12 months of doing this podcast that you, we'd have never, and from all over, you know, I mean, yourself from Guthrie, there's, you know, Bill from uh, Jer- South Jersey. Oof, I'm going to make sure I throw the South. <laughs> Bill, you know. Um, you know, Dan from California. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Jim. Uh, yeah, Lincoln Jim down in, you know. Uh, we, I, Delilah. I mean, you know, all the people that I met, you know, over Charles Place yeah. last year. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in touch with them now on Twitter. You know, and it's really, uh, it, it's just been, it, it, it's been really cool. I listen to you guys and, uh follow you i've got your i wear your shirt got your bumper sticker on my car <laughs> all right uh, there you go you guys are well represented and then uh i'm gonna get my uh like i'm gonna get chase to get signed up on y'all's thing because he he really like to like to partake in this and he's a he's a whole lot smarter than i am <laughs> uh, he, he'll give him a run for run run for the money when it comes to the sports stuff uh he, like i said he's a little smarter than i am yeah. well, i was good looking but <laughs> well none of the kids are are they no they <laughs> no I, I i i refuse to give my looks to my children yeah well guys everybody that's the podcast for today we appreciate you uh following us subscribing and everything uh listen for us uh coming up next monday we'll have another sooner fan on uh, but we appreciate Claude being on with us. Very and much so. Yeah. We, will, we will do it again soon, Claude. We'll talk to you later. Boomer Rob. Boomer Jerry. All right, gentlemen. Boomer Claude. And Boomer. Hey, Dennis. Paul Crew. Hi. Hi. Uh, I hear you play some football. A little bit. Yeah, good. Where? It's Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, you? Prison. Yeah. Well. Thanks for listening to the Sooner Football Fans Podcast. 
Sooner Football Fans Podcast is hosted by Rob Nixon, Terry Long, and occasionally Caleb Long. It is produced at the beautiful Podcast Palace in Norman, Oklahoma. Follow us on Twitter at, at SoonerFBFans and like our Facebook page at Facebook forward slash SoonerFootballFans and visit our website at www.SoonerFootballFans.com to read our blogs and keep up with our tailgating activities. Boomer Sooner, everyone.